Hey, what's up everyone? Hope you're doing well. I'm Shoshi Zato and welcome you to my channel. Uh, this is the first time I'm trying out an itinerary video. So, um, today's itinerary is gonna be of Meghalaya. If you're planning to visit Meghalaya, then in this video, I will try to give you a good itinerary so that you can explore this state at a budget. Explore the caves, waterfalls and many other interesting things that this state has to offer. If you are coming by plane, then you have to drop at uh, Umroi Airport at Shilong from where it's just 30 km uh, car drive uh, to uh, the central Shilong. So if you're coming by train, then your first destination will be Guwahati Railway Station from where you have to take a public bus and go to Bolton Bazaar where you will get both private taxis and shared cabs that will take you to Shilong. The shared taxis will charge you 500 rupees per head and if you want to go there by private taxis then the charge will be much higher obviously. As we are talking about a budget trip then shared taxis sounds the perfect choice right? However if you have a plan after reaching Shillong you want to do this thing or you want to do certain thing. The thing is that if you have an estimated time in your mind by which you want to reach Shillong then shared taxis uh, can't get you there on time because shared taxis they will delay they can't uh, they have to wait uh, until the taxi gets full and only then they will start their journey unlike private taxis who are giving service just to you so you pay the money and the car starts you know another thing is that uh, you know your journey will get delayed to Shillong and uh, often it might happen that uh, the driver they will have their own work to do uh, in the way to Shillong so that takes much that takes a lot of time and uh, it's very frustrating also this is very important that when you are coming to shillong uh, you know tell the driver to drop you at uh, police bazaar police bazaar is the uh, city hub of shillong now this is okay if you are coming in private taxi because you can just tell the driver and they will drop you there but you know in terms of share cabs uh, it's very frustrating because they'll stop at uh, different uh, points and they drop people and then pick people up and they can just uh, you know if you are the last passenger they will drop you anywhere of their choice and uh, it really gets very problematic because you know what happened in our case uh, that um, we had to walk 10 to 12 minutes in rain uh, to reach police bazaar so that's the thing that uh, i think it's important to you know just talk to them first so that they drop you at police bazaar and not anywhere else okay as i just mentioned why police bazaar it's because it is the city hub of Shillong and you will get many restaurants and hotels around this area and so it is the best thing to stay uh, you know near this area okay by the time you reach Shillong it will be afternoon if you are coming by train okay so I don't think there's uh, anything you can do uh, during the e afternoon or evening time because you will reach there you have to look for a hotel maybe you will have a meal the, it will be already evening right so what you can do uh, during that time is you can go out and explore the bazaar and you can try different uh, the local foods you can take pictures in front of I love Shillong also I would tell you to try out the roasted beef that is available just uh, you know in this area it's great also uh, try out the baby corn it's very popular over there okay so after you have done all these things it is important to plan your next day trip to Cherapunji now you will get uh, many tourism agents uh, around that area you can you know go and talk to them bargain but you know what if you are going there for the first time and uh, you don't know the how and where to visit then bargaining won't help the best option is very close to the police bazaar there is Meghalaya government tourism office you can go and talk to them because since uh, you know they are it's a government tourism so the rates are fixed so there's no way that you will get tricked and uh, you know they have this planned tour of five uh, of five destinations i will put them down in the description so you can go and check out the lists and you will get an idea how this uh, you know how uh, how the trip plans with them works 
Okay, uh, so you know, in this uh, with this uh, government tourism, there's a condition that uh, if they're taking you by bus, then you have to pay uh, less, and uh, it only happens if the bus gets uh, full of tourists. They have a certain number. Uh, the tourists should be, you know, around that number, and if it's less, then uh, they you they will take you. I'm sorry, they will take you by car and so then you have to pay a bit extra but even then there's no way that you are, you know, you are paying more than what they're supposed to take from you. So it's all government rates and I, I think uh, it's the best option to go for. You know, they are very punctual. The bus generally leaves at, uh, you know, within 8 to 8.30 in the morning and they will be back by 4.30 or depending on the traffic, it can also get evening. But the, you know, departure time uh, from Shillong is always, uh, you know, at fixed time. So you will have to get ready uh, early morning and just, you know, come to the bus, get onto it and uh, just relax. The bus ride is also very smooth. They have good guides with them and uh, you know the journey is smooth I would say. Okay let me tell you how to find this office. Uh, so when you were in police bazaar and you were standing with this building in front of you. Consider it your north and then walk east, straight east and the first road or you can also ask someone they will show you the direction. Also, you have to go plan and pay for each individual trip with them the day before. And please, I would suggest you if you want to complete most parts of Meghalaya, then keep at least five days in your hand, arrival and departure excluded. I was there for a very short period of time and I regret it. Okay. And obviously, if you want to have a customized trip plan, then uh, you have to hire a private car, talk to your hotel or, you know, for a car or talk to any other agents there and uh, you know pay extra and uh, you know have a customized plan customized trip because you know it might also happen that uh, if you're someone like me you are going to you know you are going to make some vlogs or uh, you know some filmmaking stuff so there are some places that you might not want to visit like there's a Wards lake it's just a park so i didn't go there basically okay and then there's a Bodapani lake I didn't go there you know separately I went uh, the day I was uh, you know returning uh, it was on our way I just dropped there took some photos got in the car and then back to uh, you know Guwahati station so, so you know if you want to if you want to cut down some of the places which you are not interested to go then you know then <laughs> you have to make a customized plan now which is the best time to visit now this part is a bit tricky you heard about Doki river right or you will hear if you are doing your research before coming to meghalaya the crystal clear river yeah that's that's not the same condition throughout the year no um, i visited last month it, is, uh, it was monsoon it was not clear at all you know during the monsoons you know other rivers flood into Doki and uh, makes the water polluted so why I didn't get crystal clear lake I'm um, sorry river it only stays crystal clear except the monsoons okay so plan your trip accordingly you know if you want to experience cherry blossom festival of uh, Assam our Assam also has cherry blossoms uh, then uh, the best time is November if you want to experience waterfalls in all its glory, then winter is not the best time. The waterfalls get dried out. Want to experience the seasonal festivals? Then you can go there on February, April, uh, March, and then August, and then October, November, December. So, when are you going to go there? So, I will suggest what the internet suggests. That is, uh, if you want to visit this place during summer, then uh, April to June and November to February if you want to go there during winters. Now in this part, I will share with you my favorite places that I want you to visit. I mean, you can't miss these places at any cost. Okay. So sadly, I was there for only three days and uh, 
Uh, the first day I went to Cherapanji, the second day Molinong uh, village and uh, the third day I have to return. So while uh, you know going to the Guwahati railway station, on the way we uh, you know we took a cab and we hit the Lightroom Canyon and uh, Shillong Peak Viewpoint. Firstly, make sure you don't miss most my caves. It's the uh, it, it gave me an amazing experience being my first time in an actual cave. Secondly, visit No Kalikai Falls. You cannot miss this. It's one of the it's one of the beauty of India, I would say. And uh, you know, it it's just. Okay, one thing, one thing about monsoon that I should mention is that, you know, during monsoon, it's very cloudy. Okay, so it often happens that uh, when you are going to see a waterfall, it will be covered with clouds and you have to wait for some period of time or I would say indefinite period of time to, for the cloud to disappear so that you can enjoy the waterfall. So that's the thing you should keep in mind if you are visiting this place during monsoons. Same reason I couldn't, I didn't get to enjoy the Seven Sisters waterfall because of the clouds. Visit both the single and double decker living foot bridge. Trust me, when I was there, it was monsoon and it was all green around me, you know. There's the sounds of insects and it gave me a surreal experience. I just can't explain it in words. It's just, it can only be, uh, it can only be felt. Okay. So yeah, you can't miss that. Visit Asia's cleanest village, Molinong village. And uh, you know, mostly if you are, you know, going with the tourism that I mentioned, then uh, you go there, you complete your lunch and then you just take a walk. You know, take a stroll, uh, you know, around the village. It and it's just so calm nature. You know, it's you are surrounded by this pure nature. You know, children are playing around. The hens are running around you. Uh, the people are selling their handcrafted articles in their little, small, cute shops, and it's a very good experience. Okay, and you are just surrounded by plants and trees and just greenery all around small huts. You know, and finally, I'm just so excited about this. Visit Lightloom Canyon. Okay, you can't miss this. When I went there and I saw it, I was just, you know, I was awestruck actually, because I have, I have been to a lot of mountains. Okay, I have done quite many treks i have seen you know i've seen quite many viewpoints but this light loom canyon th that view just stands out you know you go there and just tell me if it don't take your breath away that's it hey uh, if you haven't seen my meghalaya travel film then it will pop up here or it will be linked down in the description so if you just go and watch that uh, it would really mean a lot to me. So, yeah, see you soon. Bye.